This is B. Claymore with the Comic Book Writer. And today I want to talk briefly about a tool that's available to you online called Pinterest. Um, probably most of you are familiar with Pinterest. Uh, briefly what it does is it collects uh, what we call pins, which are basically images that are usually attached to websites or articles related to the images. It's, uh, it's used by a variety of people for a variety of reasons. A lot of people use it to collect recipes or craft ideas or what have you. Um, there's two reasons to use Pinterest as a comic book writer that, that uh, I think are effective. <clears throat> First of all, and I'm here on my, my op I just this is my sign-in screen basically. So what you see here are a collection of pins that people that I follow or maybe keywords that I've used um have basically fed into a script into a stream and sometimes i'll literally just go to this first page and just kind of scroll through and see if anything catches my eye uh, when i'm looking for inspiration um look over here i see that's a uh, cover to a comic book i wrote um anyway uh, you can tell <laughs> this reflects my interest to a large degree um, there's a lot of mid-century modern uh, home stuff and um, tiki art and things related to writers and comics and music and what have you. So you can you can follow as many boards as you want or as few as you want and when you go into your stream you'll see things like this pop up. Over here for instance you see this guy with this half-naked guy with a sword. Uh, an artist who's a friend of mine often uh, poses or posts reference photos uh, of the human body uh, that, that would come in handy for other artists. So that's that's one use for Pinterest, and, and, and you can even, if you're looking for specific inspiration, you can even, uh, here you go, like say London and World War II, say you want to do something in London and World War II, or you're trying to brainstorm a way to, just to communicate the environment or what have you, just typing it in pulls up any pins that are related to the subject. So as you can see, you can scroll down here, and uh, there's graphics, and there's photographs uh, from the Blitz, and Churchill and what have you. Um, so sometimes if you're if you're stuck or if you're just looking for a little jolt, that's a good thing to do. But what I really want to talk about today is how to use this in collaboration with artists, letters, colorists, uh, editors, other writers, what have you. If I go to my personal feed here, this takes me to slowly but surely my own boards. So these are boards that I've set up on my own, um, re really for myself as much as anything, a place to collect pins, but, but they're public. So you know, as you can see, a few hundred people follow me. Uh, and so anything I post will show up in their feeds. And if you use p particular tags, then things that, you, um, things that you've, you've pinned will show up in, in searches and feeds. Um, as you can see, it's been, it's been a while since I've posted a lot to these boards, but it covers uh, a variety of interests and what I want to talk about specifically though is if I keep scrolling down here you will see a section called secret boards what's that well that's literally a collection of secret boards um, what secret boards are are boards that you you could you could keep them to yourself and only you can see them or you can invite other people to contribute to the boards, to pin things, and to see what you've posted. And that's where it comes in really handy in collaboration with other creators. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna, I've got a few things here that are in various stages of, of development, but since earlier I talked a little bit about a book that Shane White and I are doing next year called, um, the book is actually called Endless Summer, Volume One, Dead Man's Curve. The original working title was simply Dead Man's Curve, so, you can see any of these boards that say DMC in the front are boards that Shane or I have created and have been tagged. We've broken them down individually to specific uh, items related to the book, right? So here's the DMC people, for instance. So the first 25 pages of this book actually introduce over 20 characters. With that in mind, Shane really had to focus on uh, individualizing the characters, finding the right reference points, looking for actors or public figures that would influence his approach to the characters. And what he would do is anytime he would come across anything online or on Pinterest that uh, struck him as related to these characters and how we might develop them, he simply pinned it to this board. And you'll see there are 217 pins, so he, he's been pretty active with it. And that, as much as anything, that gives you an indication into how he um, goes about developing and building things. Obviously, he's very, very thorough. But as I've mentioned previously, the book is set in 1963, and it's set on the uh, 
coast of California. So in, in, without going into too much detail, the book sort of involves youth culture of the era, sort of a hyper, uh, hyper realistic version of, of youth culture of the era. So any of these pins are directly related to something about the book um, to the point where you can see he's even, here's a pin with a young Paul Newman. Um, there's a character in the book named Slick Rhodes. <laughs> and uh, so he's used this image as visual inspiration for the character. And of course it goes beyond visual inspiration. Sometimes mannerisms or personalities are what you're, you're drawing from. Um, so uh, it's, as you can see, there's uh, and again, you, you'll see he's, and, and when you, when you use Pinterest, if you're not familiar with it, and I, I would explain how to use it, but it's pretty simple. You go to Pinterest.com, sign up for it. Um, it, it's pretty intuitive, but you also have the option to caption things. And so again, this is his inspiration for a couple characters in the book. Um, so he's captioned it that way. So that, so that whenever he posts something, I get a notification in my email and I can come see what he's posted now. And then I'll comment on the board, uh, or I'll just message him or email him back with, with thoughts on things. Um, and then if we, so that's, that board is completely involving different characters for the book. Um, and here I'll, I'll, I'll kind of show you specifically how the reference influences the, the way we do the book. So another category is transportation. Obviously, youth culture of the early 60s was heavily involved in um, you know, building cars and, and uh, drag racing and, and motorcycles and, and stuff like that. You know, youth culture was really first spending money on their own things. And, and, and some of the things that they were spending money on were involved with transportation. So if you scroll through, you'll see Woody's here, um, surfing cars and what have you, things that we want to use to influence the book specifically up at the top here you can see he's got a lot of um, stock car um, stock cars that have been uh, used in drag races or um, street races or what have you so there is a sequence in the book where two of the characters are involved in a, in a racetrack scene so what shane did was collect cars that are specifically going to be used as specific reference for the vehicles the characters are driving. And you can see here, I mean, I'll click on, and it's perfect. I mean, and, and, and he's found a, a site that has a, a, a wider range of, a, a wide array of views for him to use as reference. So how does that apply to the actual drawing? Well, let me, what I'll do now is go to Google Drive and I'll show you a page that he's actually drawn using this reference and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There you go. So he's tweaked, you know, the, the design of the car a little bit where it, where it fits the story, but he has found these reference points. He's got them easily accessible and he's used these to influence the scenes in the comic book. I'll page backwards here and here's, well, here's an excellently designed page. This is basically, this basically looks like a poster or a print, but um, as you can see, the He's, he's captured this realistically, um, but, but it still stylistically fits within the book. Um, and, and he did that through use of the stuff he found and categorized and cataloged on Pinterest. So there you go. It's very simple. Um, it is really an effective tool, a great way to communicate, share things. And, you know, there's no, there's no searching through email or trying to sort through anything. You just go right to Pinterest, scroll down to your boards, and if it's organized well, you can access the reference points you need.